What is going on, Diablo 2 fans? Dabrunski here, and today I'm going to be breaking down what I think, in my humble opinion, is one of the most fun characters to play in Diablo 2, and she's absolutely viable and not super expensive to build, with the exception of one specific rumored. Now, you're probably like, what character are you talking about? Well, today I'm going to be covering the Ice Boazon in Diablo 2. Like all of my previous build videos, timestamps will be in the description below. So if you guys want to bounce back and forth between gear, attributes, the skill tree, or the gameplay, they're there for you guys to use. So please take advantage of them. Other than that, guys, really do hope you enjoy this particular build video. Let's jump in. So before I dive into the attributes, the skill tree, gear, and gameplay, there are four key points that I want to touch on about the boson specifically. And before I kind of go into those points, I really want to emphasize the overall arcing theme of this build is variability depending on your increased attack speed breakpoints, where you want to farm, how you're going to handle cold immunes, and really just how you want to tailor the build based on if you're lazy and you want to pot a lot or you don't. There is a lot of different ways to set up this build. Is mine the best? I'm not necessarily saying it is, but I just really wanted to stress that there's many different ways that you can set up this Boazon build specifically. But the first key point is that choosing the appropriate bow for your Boazon. Now really, there's a lot of different choices depending on your wealth. Uh, the rumored ice, in my opinion, is top tier for maximizing your cold damage. Depending on the base that you want to choose to make that rumored, it's going to influence the rest of your gear for breakpoints and how much you can mana leech back and your raw physical damage compared to your elemental damage. So what do I mean by that? Well, a map bow shoots faster, so you can do more elemental damage, but you can have less melee damage, which ultimately means less mana leech. Where the Grand Matron bow, more melee damage, you can leech more, but you're gonna be doing a little bit less elemental damage because you can't shoot as much volume of arrows compared to the map bow. But then again, you can leech back more. So again, depending on how you kind of want to set up your build. Wind Force is also a really nice choice for this build. It's kind of centering the balance between your physical damage aspect and your elemental damage aspect, which means more melee damage, leeching back more. You don't have to necessarily be as much of a mana pig with this character. And then in terms of some more budget bow options, you can run Melody. Depending on the base, you can get up to six to Boazon skills. And then also there's the unique bow Wizendraw. It's a really common bow that has varying minus cold res. It's kind of like the poor man's ice. So again, there's definitely a lot of different options in terms of the bow that you want to choose for this particular build. The second point that I want to touch on is mobility with your ice bow is on. There's really two routes that you can choose, uh, focusing on trying to improve your teleport as much as you can by doing things like putting your offhand CTA in your cube, switching to a whiz spike, and then achieving a higher FCR breakpoint that way. I personally am not a big fan of this. I find that uh, constantly throwing your CTA and whiz spike, switching it in and out of your cube is a disaster. I don't think it's worth your time, but it's definitely an option. Uh, you can focus on running and just using Enigma to reposition. That's actually the road that I took with this build. Or you can just primarily rely entirely on running and then not even have teleport for this build. Really, the Amazon's FCR breakpoints are so horrible that you can actually justify focusing only on pumping up your faster run walk, depending on how you want to tailor the build. So you can use different body armor options like Chains of Honor. The third point that I want to touch on is how do you handle cold immunes with the Ice Boson specifically? I think that there's two effective methods of doing this. And again, it's going to depend on the bow that you choose to use on your Ice Boson build. Again, kind of reiterating that theme of variability. But the first approach is using physical bow damage. So pairing something like a wind force with the skill strafe is going to add a lot of physical supplemental damage that you can use on a cold immune. The other approach is putting extra bows on skill points into the fire portion of the boa skill tree. This tailors really well to specific bows like ice in a matriarchal bow base because it has very low raw physical damage. So that's the kind of the scenario where using supplemental fire damage can be very effective. So the fourth and final point that I want to talk about is mana issues with the ice bows on build. I don't care where you farm, how you build this character, or what bow you use, she is going to chew through mana like crazy. When you are spamming frozen arrow at 25 mana per shot, she just goes through her mana globe from here to here in no time. Fortunately though, there is a couple different approaches you can take to alleviate some of her mana needs. First is using a bow base or a bow that has a lot of raw physical damage. This ultimately means more mana leech back. 
The second approach is stacking mana after kill items like Silk Weaves. Uh, third is you can just invest a lot of points into mana. I actually really recommend this. Do not go max vitality with this build. I think I've got more than 150 points into mana. Uh, please do this on a Bozon build. She will love you for it if you do that. And finally, you can run an Insight Mercenary. This is great for completely negating the need to mana pot, but at the same time, it's going to completely kill your cold damage compared to using an Infinity Mercenary. But yeah, a lot of different methods of helping to alleviate some of her mana issues. That's a lot of time they spent covering some key important points. Uh, it was just a lot I wanted to cover for this build specifically, but let's dive into the breakdown of my build. So my attributes, uh, skill tree, the gear that I chose to use and why, and then we'll go over some gameplay. Yeah, let's jump in. So this character is not a max Vita build. I know that's kind of funny because pretty much all of my builds are max Vita. I don't play hardcore, but I have enough strength to equip my gear, which in this case, it's actually 149. I'm using an Ethereal Monarch on Switch Spirit, so that saves me a couple extra strength points. Uh, Dexterity is again, just enough to equip the bow. Uh, the base that I'm using, which is a matte bow, has a 187 Dexterity requirement, so I have 190. That helps reach that. And I have 205 points into Vitality, which is just under a thousand pre-battle orders. And then I have everything else put into energy. So I have just over a thousand mana with a CTA, but that's really important. You don't want to go max fight on this build. You need tons of energy points. Uh, she is just a mana pig. With the gear setup, I have 75 into, or 75 fire resistance, excuse me, 75 lightning, uh, minus 26 poison and minus 26 cold. Cold does not really matter because the combination of Nightwings and Raven Frost, I have lots of cold absorbs, so that's nothing to worry about. The negative poison res is a bit of a bitch if you're farming in ancient tunnels or you're doing bail running with this character and you do get poisoned because you're basically just gonna have to go back to town or drink antidotes. But you can change your gear around to stack a little bit more poison res, but this is just my setup. It's, uh, I don't really have a problem running it. Uh, I have 158% MF, a lot of gold fine, which is kind of funny. Um, this build stacks gold fine pretty easy because of the bow that I'm using, which is ice. 75 increased attack speed. Uh, that's really important. You need to check on the IS calculator, the website. I have the link for it in the description. Uh, your bow base, you want to make sure that you hit a really high break points. I believe it's like 52 and 75 for this map bow. Again, it's going to vary depending on if you're using Grand Matron Bow, uh, Wind Force, you know, a Melody, whatever, in a different base. So make sure you guys check your breakpoints. I think that stacking more increased attack speed and firing off more volleys of shots of arrows is going to be more damage than kind of stacking like facets in your body armor and your helmet. But again, that's up to you. You guys can play around with what uh, your gear and how you want to build the character. But as far as the skill tree goes, we'll start with Javelin first. I have nothing into this tree. It's a boa tree, nothing into javelin and spear skills. Uh, for the bows on, or bow and crossbow skill tree, excuse me, I maxed cold arrow, put one hard point into ice arrow, and then I maxed freezing arrow. Now this is really important. Additional points into ice arrow, all of it, that it does is it increases the freeze length percentage of freezing arrow. And when you see the gameplay, you're gonna see that I'm shooting so many arrows and having just the radius of freezing arrow. Everything's frozen except for champions and bosses. And at the rate that I shoot arrows, I don't need a longer freeze duration than what I have the two seconds. So that's why I didn't put any points into here. If you're farming maybe the ancient tunnels only specifically, I guess if you want to put a couple points in here, you can, it's up to you. I don't think you need it though. And I have one into magic arrow, one into multi-shot, and then I maxed a fire arrow and exploding arrow. Um, exploding arrow is what I use to handle cold immunes. Again, like I mentioned earlier, you can use like stray for guided arrow or something if you have more physical bow damage. But I really like using the exploding arrow route and you'd be surprised on players seven, you can handle any cold immune, no problem in ancient tunnels. And even Bale Running and World Stone Keep, uh, Cold Immunes are no problem on players 3, and you can even do them on players 7 with this setup. Then for passive and magic, I just have one into Inner Sight, one into Slow Missiles, and then one to, de to Decoy, excuse me. I do occasionally use Decoy. I don't go the Valkyrie route uh, because I have played around with the passive dodge skills, and they're useful sometimes, but more often than not, they drive me insane, so I don't have anything into Evade avoid or dodge and I have one hard point in a crit strike the majority of 
damage with how I tailored my build is put into, or it comes from cool damage, excuse me, so I don't really see the need of putting anything more than one hard point into crit strike. And I have one hard point into pierce. Um, having maximum pierce is really important with a cool boson because your freezing arrow is going to travel through monsters and then do successive chains of freezing damage to big packs. So it's really important you have 100% pierce. So getting around 70 and then using razor tail, that gives you 100 total. So that's really important. And then I put my remaining points into penetrate. That's max just for higher attack rating so that I can hit stuff better. That's basically how I tailored my skill tree. The only thing you can kind of tweak is putting additional points into strafe. If uh, you're using like wind force and you want to handle cold means that way. I don't use immolation arrow. It's fine just going exploding arrow. Yeah, that's the skill tree. So we'll dive into the gear. So the gear for this Amazon build, I wanted it to be focused around a character that could farm everywhere, not just sort of a niche ancient tunnels focused single player farming build. So you can farm chaos, bail running the pits, again, AT. This character can farm everywhere. So it's definitely battle net viable. So we'll work our way up from the boots going over the gear. We'll talk about a couple different alternative options as well. For the boots, I have these 30 fast Romok, 10 FHR, Lightning, Fire Res, and MF boots. Um, Trex is good. Uh, you can use War Traveler if you want to stack MF. Although I think a nice pair of rare boots with Res and MF is going to be ideal for this setup because it's a little tough to cap your resistances depending on the body armor that you're using. So that's why I'm using these rare boots. Raven Frost for Cannot Be Frozen, that's very important. Razor Tail, that helps me get the maximum pierce that we talked about going over the skill tree. You really want max pierce with this particular build, in my opinion. Uh, then I have this Dual Leech, Lightning, Fire Res, Mana, Rare Ring. Um, this is really nice, helps complement the build. This is one of the better Rare Rings that I've found. Uh, again, just yeah, Mana Leech, Life Leech, and then Dual Resistances. Uh, the important reses are capped on this build. Uh, 220 Boa Gloves with 30% fire resistance and 7% MF. Um, if you wanted to go more of a physical bow base damage route and splitting it between elemental and physical bow damage, you might use something like laying a hands with wind force, but uh, I think 220 Boa Gloves boosting your plus skills for freezing arrow is ideal for this setup. For the body armor, I went with Enigma. Just for the all skill, two all skills, faster run walk, um, and MF and teleport, obviously. Strength is nice as well. You don't have to use Enigma. You can definitely run everywhere and then use something like Treachery. That's an awesome body armor. Tons of increased attack speed to help you reach higher breakpoints. And then the Fade proc for res and DR. You can use Chains of Honor, Duress. There's a lot of different other budget alternative options. Uh, you don't have to use Enigma, although it is really nice for repositioning your Mercenary, because we all know Mercenary AI, they're just stupid. Uh, for the amulet, I'm using High Lords for the one tall skills, 20% increase attack speed, and 35 all res. You could use something like Cat's Eye for more dexterity. Again, it's up to you. If you're only going to focus on farming into tunnels, uh, you could swap to Cat's Eye. The increased attack speed is important though, because like I said, I wanted that 75, so I get that from the 20 from High Lords, uh, 20 from the bow, or sorry, 20 from the gloves, excuse me. There is 20 on the bow, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, and then I have Night Wings. This is 13% cold damage Night Wings with two dull skills and 15% increased attack speed, 20 light res duel. So again, the IS from the helmet, uh, High Lords, the Boa Gloves, and then I'm using the Rumored Ice in a map bow. Uh, it actually has 20% increased attack speed on it, so that helps me reach 75. Again, refer to the IS calculator, set up uh, your specific breakpoints for your build, depending on what bow you're using. This is a god-awful rolled ice, so please just don't look at it. Um, on Switch, I have... Oops, this was playing around. I'll show you guys this in the gameplay. Uh, CTA and Ethereal Spirit, just so it has less strength requirement. And then I do mess around a little bit with the lower res wand occasionally. If I'm doing bill running, that uh, extra additional minus res is really nice for boosting our cool damage. Uh, for the inventory, I have Torch and Annie. So this is a 14-16 Torch and a 20-18 Annie. Uh, full inventory of Boa Skillers with one Geed's Grand Charm. And then I have certain different assorted faster run walk resistance, uh, faster run walk mana, and then life fire res charm. So again, that's how I get my fire res and lightning res capped. I should go to the main because I don't have the shield. So fire res and lightning res is capped. And then I have decent amount of mana, uh, tax speed breakpoints and whatnot. 
So for the mercenary, um, this is kind of my traditional side of the tin. All my build videos, my ethereal, chammed, 20 DRV gaze, uh, e-bugged fortitude, and infinity. Uh, on lower player's difficulty setting, you can use something like insight to uh, not have to worry about potting. Um, you're going to run into more cold immunes and you're going to do less damage with your freezing arrow. Although on lower player's difficulty settings with a more budget build, I mean, player's one with an insight mercenary is fine. But I wanted to really crank the damage to showcase like the full potential of this uh, build in this video. But yeah, so just infinity. Uh, insight is definitely an option if you want to go more of a budget route. But that is all the gear, attributes, and skill trees. So we'll do a player's seven ancient tunnels run. And then we'll do, I guess, a chaos run or a bail run to uh, show you guys this build in action. So I'm going to set the player's difficulty to seven so you guys can see it. I'll go do ancient tunnels run. This goes on build, crushes AT. I got a really good map where the ancient tunnels entrance is pretty close. But I really like to just do the majority of this, like getting around with this build is just running and then I just reposition my mercenary with teleport to get that uh, fiction or from infinity. Just focus on champion the boss pack. So you got to really watch the embalmed because I have very poor poison res. So you don't want to run into their poison cloud if you can help it. That guy's cold enchanted, a little bit slower to kill. This is player seven. I really just focus on champions of boss facts and kind of skip around. So my mercenary is, he can kind of keep up, but he's lagging a little bit. So that's why I really like the teleport, just to bring him up to my speed and get that conviction aura. Although you absolutely don't need it. I mean, you can run Chains of Honor. It's an easy way to cap your res, and then you could run all MF small terms. Again, it's totally up to you. This character is a bit of a mana pig, as you can see. Constantly plotting. It's not too much of an issue though, because I find at the rate that I kill stuff, especially on player 7, I can pick up mana and rejuve pots as I need. Close to me. Oh, Spirit Thresher, let's check that out. That might be Ethereal. Ethereal, 4 open sockets, F. Nope, oh, one to attack rating and non F. So we're not quite on par with like a GG Blizzard Sorceress, but I mean, player seven, she just crushed. Like, absolutely crushed Ancient Tunnels. Now we'll do Bale. Uh, we'll just stock up on our arrows. Typically, I like to go down to players one. And then get to bail, and then we'll crank up to players uh, seven after that. It's kind of funny. I actually have a decent bail map as well. We'll just run by most of the stuff and try and get to the throne room. Things can get a little sketchy there, depending on your RNG. Like if you have a lot of the witches spawn, they're all cold immune, so it's a bit of a bitch. But you'll get to see the immolation arrow in effect. And same with the RNG on how wave two spreads apart. Those are really the two things that can kind of determine the run speed for bail running, but... Oh no! Dolls! These Dark Lords, we just switched to um, Freezing Arrow. Excuse me. Fire Arrow, not Freezing Arrow. I actually got pretty good Throne Room RNG. So, I'll go out of town. We'll set the player's difficulty to 8. Let's go to Frigid. Little CTA buff. Now this is a bit of a pain in the ass, but if you really want to optimize bail running, use a lower res wand on Switch. Decoy. Decoy is really nice because it's going to take the Decrepify aura off of you, and that really slows down your volume of arrow shots, so they're a perfect position. See if we can get good RNG. The Freezing Arrow, switch the offhand, cast lower res, and go back. It is a bit of pain in the butt, but player's eight, 
Fail running, you gotta do what you gotta do to make it viable. Bullets on, right? So I'm just using the fire arrow tree. Your fire skill, excuse me. Take out these death mages. And then you can actually almost get these guys to freeze and not even spawn hiders if you're lucky. Again, freezing arrow, lower res one, and then go back. Stack up on our mana pots. So I have, yeah, 1500 health. Uh, Almost 1,200 mana, actually. Look at them all frozen again. Go res and go back. This is where that pierce again is really important. Like I mentioned, every arrow volley is going through and I'm proccing full damage. Last one, final Lister. Wave 5, Players 8, Ice Maiden. I'd say that that clear speed is like... Faster than a Trapsin, um, but slower than a Blizzard Sorceress, I would say. But we'll go down to Players 3. Um, yeah, we'll kind of switch our... Rebuffer CTA. This is the thing that I really hate about a lower res wand. Swap around, switcheroo thing. But him doing bail on like even players three with the bows on is pretty slow. But it's like going down to players one. And that lower res wand really helps us out. That, uh, the lower res charge doesn't last forever too, so it's good to keep buffed up on it. Come oh, on, baby. Just fathom! Still missing it for the grail! Oh, we got a bone. Doesn't matter. Last minute, he pulled it off. Yeah, that was players 8 bail running and swapping down to players 1 for the final bail kill with an ancient tunnels run to show you guys a good idea what the ice bowl on is is like. Well guys, there you have it. That wraps up everything I wanted to cover for the ice bowl on build. Like I mentioned, there is a lot of variability in terms of the gear that you use, how you invest your skills, basically just tailoring the character to where and how you want to play it. But she's definitely a lot of fun. If you have not played this character before, I highly encourage you to give her a shot. In my opinion, she's more powerful than the melee damage to Boazon builds setups. Now, a lot of you might not agree with that, but feel free to let me know in the comment section below what you think about this Diablo 2 build. And like always, if you could throw a like on this video, share it, and even consider subscribing if you're new to my channel. I post new weekly content and stream on a consistent basis, so there's always new stuff to look forward to, and your support with the sub will mean a lot. Other than that, guys, I uh, hope you have a fan frick fantastic day, and I'll see you on my next Diablo 2 video or live stream. Peace out. Yeah.